I just spent 15 minutes. Somebody is calling me from South Hackensack, New Jersey. Boy, these spam folks. Ignore. I just spent 15 minutes talking to this laptop and this phone and realized that the laptop only recorded about a minute and a half of this conversation that I just pretty much had with myself. So, on that note, welcome to Season 2, Episode 3 of Storytime with Surly with me, Surly Mechanic. Boy, look at that. Big, long, white one. Alright, so in this story, I'm not going to do what I did in the 15 minutes of me talking to myself. In this story, I am going to talk about an adventure my kids had. So, a buddy of mine, who is a safety man out at my newest job, uh, which I'm starting, started week two this Monday, didn't work today because of the weather, and then tomorrow we're expecting 19 degrees in the morning and about freezing all day long. Which for Southeast Texas is pretty bad. Now I lived in Virginia for a while. So. Uh, it's not really a big deal to me. Either way. I'll stay warm. And I can drive in it. Um, so my buddy. Had a four wheeler. That. I fixed up for his grandkids to ride. That the. Engine eventually went bad in. And I fixed with some eBay stuff. And some stuff I had laying around the house. Around the garage. And uh, he didn't want to put any more money into it. It was cheaper for him to go buy something new for, the, for his grandkids for Christmas. Anyway. So I have been wanting to teach my children to independently ride foilers on their own. Um... Helmets and everything. They're not ATV helmets, but they're still helmets. Um, so initially I got Lillian, who is my soon-to-be seven-year-old, onto the back of the four-wheeler after I got it running. And she made... So the lap around my big yard is somewhere around more than a tenth of a mile. Um... And I have a little track laid out for them to ride on. Um, and she made it one time around. Because she could not differentiate between gripping and using her thumb for the throttle. Which is fine. She's got to learn. So that was a very quick trip for her. It was full blast. And then letting off. Full blast. And then letting off. And she finally was like, I, I give up. Uh, now my oldest daughter, who will be 12 very soon, um, she was all about it. The first day that I had the four-wheeler up and running, uh, the battery's bad in it, so I had to jump start it. Well, I filled it up with fuel, and she probably burned through three quarters of a gallon, so, because it only holds about a gallon. So she, she put through its paces over the course of about five hours. Just laps, laps, laps. Do, turn around, do it back the other direction. And we have like a little miniature tabletop um, from d me digging under the house that they've been riding over with the four-wheeler and with, with my seven-year-old's pink Jeep. Um... So it was, it was fun. It was a good learning experience. We went over the, where's the foot brake at? Where's the hand brake at? Where's the throttle at? Where's the kill switch? Show me where the kill switch is. Well, the second day, because it was a three or four day weekend, three day weekend, something like that. My oldest daughter decided she wants to ride it again. So I get it jump started and I might have to get a battery for it. That's part of the story. So I jump started, tweaked the idle a little bit, 
and she goes and rides it around for maybe 15 20 minutes half an hour at the most makes a bunch of laps well she was making a turn along the wood line and coming back up and it shut off when she let off the throttle I'm fairly certain it's just because it needs a battery because the battery has nothing on it. It's just and it completes the circuit is all it's doing. Well, uh, she pushes it over. I hook jumper cables up to one of my spare batteries that we use for random stuff. Jump start it. I tweak the idle a little, little bit more. It's good to go. She hops back on it, releases the brake. Boom, she's on her way. Well, I stood there, and we call this the fourth turn. It's down by these two little trees that are by my main gate. I'm standing by the fourth turn. She comes through the first turn, and is in the back stretch. Hits the wood line, turns, and she's getting it. And I'm thinking to myself, she needs to slow down. Well, she comes flying by me, and I said, slow down. And she's screaming, I can't slow down. I said, take your hand off the throttle. She goes, I already did, and she shows me her hand off the, the throttle. Well, I, evidently, to keep it running, I'm, I'm assuming this is probably just because of the battery. It could be a carburetor issue, but it's a brand new carburetor. Evidently, I think I tweaked the idle up a little too high, so it was holding the throttle, uh, the butterfly open a little more. And uh, I'm screaming at her, hit the, hit the kill switch, hit the kill switch, hit the kill switch. And she makes that fourth turn, headed toward the first turn, sliding sideways, just, well, she makes it through the first, the fourth turn, hits the first turn, and comes down the back stretch before she realizes what I'm saying, and she's throwing grass, and she finally hits that kill switch, and it, oh, comes to a stop. She gets off, pulls her helmet off, and you can see just the relief from her getting off of it. She, you know, and that's something that I want to teach the two of them, well, all of them really, is that oh, there's a pillow back there. Oh, that's my mother-in-law's robe from when she lived here. Um. Uh, which I need to get that back to her. Kathy, if you're watching this, I gotta get your robe. Anyway. Uh, I want to teach them to be as calm as they can in emergency situations. Um, most people's first reaction is, oh, freak out. And I have taught myself never to freak out. Like, I've been in some pretty decent situations where people are looking at me like I'm crazy because I'm not freaking out uh, which I guess I can roll into some other stories now that I think about that but you need to keep a level head and you know I could have started freaking out like you know oh no the four wheelers out of control I just kept going hit the kill switch hit the kill switch that's all you have to do hit the kill switch so that's what I want to instill in both of them, or the three of them. Timothy's, you know, he's not even two, so, um, is to keep a level head. Now, I'm not saying you can't be passionate. I'm not saying you, you're not going to get agitated. I'm not saying that the world is going to work in your favor. The world is not fair, and nobody tells says that enough. Nobody tells people that enough. The world is unfair. That's just the way it goes. Um, and that's something I want to teach them and tell them. So if I have to use a foiler, a dirt bike, real world, you know, uh, here's another little small story. So I was cleaning up my work area the other day out in front of my garage. I say the other day, it's about two weeks ago. And they said, dad, can we play with this rope? And it's a rope that I use just to tie stuff down, you know, nothing serious. Maybe a half inch nylon rope, you know. I said, yeah, y'all just be careful with it. And uh, Lillian thought it would be funny. That's my seven-year-old. Thought it would be funny to make a 
loop out of it and throw it around her waist up under her, you know, armpits and have her sister pull her across the grass until she realizes that, that rope burns. And I'd warn them, be careful, don't hurt yourself. And guess what? You went and hurt yourself. Now it's, Dad, the rope burned me. Yeah. If you'd have done what I said in the first place and not acted silly with the rope, you wouldn't have gotten burned. So, learning experience. Drink from the hose, skin your knees up, play in the dirt. Go too fast on four-wheelers sometimes, responsibly. I mean, it's not like she was flying at full throttle. It was just, it wasn't about to stop, so. Um, I tell them there's a time and place for everything. Sometimes this is the time, and sometimes it's not, and sometimes this is the place, and sometimes it's not. But, that being said, this is going to be my new recording area, so... I'm going to be working on some sheetrock, as you can see in that corner up there. Pulling some screws out of the wall. I have a bunch of these little posters that I've made from brochures and autographs and all kinds of stuff I'm making from my office. Um, right now, I actually have my phone propped up on a stack of magazines that are probably older than some of y'all's kids. Um, automotive magazines, not the other kind. I don't keep those. Don't really even have any of those. Um, so, make sure you like, subscribe, question, comment, concern, criticize, jazzercise. It's cold back here because this back portion of the house is not connected to central heat and AC. So, it's going from storage to dad's hangout spot slash office so stay tuned i have more things coming uh bear with me probably won't be as much posted maybe some shorts here and there so Sarah the mechanics channel we appreciate you guys shout out to peyton lillian and timothy you guys are awesome always do the right thing even if it's not the cool thing y'all have a good evening we'll see y'all later